Puck Hummers, Brittany. Yes, Chesco! Oh, maybe I'll just throw myself on the water and then we can bust a move out there. <laughs> Pull up. <laughs> and sign up for this. And me and Berkey, we're like, we're wordsmiths. We like to make music. The mist brings everything to me. Hurrah! The mist brings everything to me. Hurrah! Once the, the mist, mist disappeared, it was like a, a wave of relief came over me and Berkey. It's a mystery! It's a mystery! It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. <laughs> yeah, it was good to have a bit of fun. Jethro and Chase are ocean testing an experimental surf craft while they're off duty. Safety testing is our number one priority down here. Being on our day off, me and Chase thought there's no better time than to get that vessel in the water and can make it to shore safe. It is serious business. We've got helmets on, we've got all the safety gear that we could possibly have. This should go one way or the other. On that particular day, the surf was pretty big. Um, we weren't scared, but we were certainly a bit nervous. We didn't think during the first test we could launch it off the beach, and there were quite a few eyes on us, so we decided to take it out of the rocks and, and go for the rock launch. On that vessel the first time, that thing was wobbly as, mate. Oh, my God. The chair was too far back. The weight distribution was all off. We had eyes on us. We were just capsizing left, right and centre. Drifting into the rocks too, and we were in danger of, like, getting smoked. Look at him. Once we crossed the first hurdle and we were out the back, me and Chase realised we were actually in quite a bit of trouble here. Oh, they're in a good spot. Right out the back, big surf. It's come to the point where we need to show that this vessel is in fact seaworthy and we need to get a bomb. You what? I think we just have to commit most of the best. They're going. They're going. Yep. You ready? Yep. Yep. Oh, yes. 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 Just before glory was out. No! <laughs> it was ours, we could see it. Boom. Complete destruction of the throne. Embarrassment, egos are in the water. Wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> there are definitely some adjustments that have to be made. At the end of the day, I'm happy that my day off wasn't a waste. Yes, we did fail in the mission, but Hey, that's what product testing is all about, and we'll go back to the drawing board. The battle is lost. Till next time. But they live to try another day. It was late afternoon, it was a pretty busy day. I locked up the tower. I went, you know what, I'll, I'll go in there, I'll clean it up. Get some good, good points to my name. So I went in there to clean it up. When I went in there, I was only propping the door open with my foot. My foot slipped off. and just all came crashing down, and that was the end of it. Yeah, North Tower to Chapo, pack up. Yeah, Chapo. <laughs> Probably not going to believe this one, but I was semi-stuck in the tower, eh? The door and the roof just shut on me, and I, I can't get out. <laughs> so yeah, when I radioed in, there was about 10 seconds of silence going, what? Like, no one could really understand, and then it was just pure laughter. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty heavy. I'm, I'm stuck. The door's not opening, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Oh. You think you've seen everything? Uh, Trainees, they always come up with something new, don't they? Yeah, unfortunately, Hoppo was on. Hoppo was in the tower, so he watched the whole event unfold. Not only is Jethro stuck, but none of his brothers in blue are rushing to the rescue. They were just waiting. No one's helping me. We don't think we're just going to leave him there till tomorrow morning when we open it up. Oh, rescue! I got 
got stuck. What are you doing there, bro? I got stuck. Are you serious? <laughs> you couldn't get out? Reedy didn't even know I was in there. Reedy just came by and found me in there. So thank God Reedy was around. He's finally managed to fly the coop, but now Jethro has to face his boss, Hoppo. Have you got an explanation on how it actually happened? Yeah, I was using my back foot to hold it open. And I landed a little bit too far, my foot slipped, and it all shut. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a long afternoon, but that's just made my day. Local musician Stewie has dislocated his shoulder while enjoying a swim. Tank relief, okay, buddy? Shoulder surgery, and it's that shoulder that's popped me out. Yeah, we're gonna give him some pain relief and then take him maybe up in the tower. The green whistle contains a powerful analgesic gas, methoxyfluorine. It's almost like being intoxicated. So you can something else. Just taking as big a breath as okay. you can. It kind of takes away the pain and creates a really funny outcome most of the time. Take it easy. You got me on the green stuff. Yeah. yeah. Real deal, baby. I knew instantly that, that we had a serious character on our hands. What's your I've got a band, Thunderstorm, trying to rock and roll. Thunderstorm. Going. Thunderstorm, hundred percent. Oh, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. You play guitar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew there was going to be something, something strange and obscure that, that me and him were going to bond over. As soon as this shoulder gets popped back in. <laughs> and it didn't take much prodding to, to work out that that bond was music. Yeah, do you want to come in? When beaching the jet ski, lifeguards must turn off the engine while simultaneously running the ski up the sand. It's a multitasking job that can easily go wrong. Oh. <laughs> you all right? When I first hear it, I instantly felt like a shooting pain. I had a good laugh at him and I felt terrible. And then he's just going, oh, not good. And I knew he popped his shoulder straight away. Oh my, someone come down and give me a hand. Jeff's popped his shoulder, come off the ski. Have you done oh, it before? Oh, nah. Nah, they just support your arm. Ah. That's it, take deep breath. Deep breath. Whistle me up, baby. Come on, get the whistle. Lifeguards normally administer pain-killing gas to injured beachgoers. Get the finger over it, mate. Today, it's Jethro that will get a taste of the green whistle. Nah, good, 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 good. Keep sucking, keep sucking, keep sucking. The green whistle seems to affect everyone in such a diverse way, and Jeffro not being too big of a guy, it affected him quite quickly. Pop the locker and take me to Charlestown. Come <laughs> <laughs> and crew, prepare the doors for landing. <laughs> he might have been even flying a 747 at one stage. Says you're a captain speaking. <laughs> you would be the most gorgeous flight attendant too. I should have been a flight attendant. <laughs> Keep sucking up. Paramedics have been called. Until then, lifeguards manage Jethro's pain. This is whistle number two. After the second whistle, I have no recollection of what I said. I know I could have said anything. Paramedic <laughs> eel. Paramedic <laughs> eel. This extended care paramedic will attempt to relocate Jethro's shoulder on the first aid bed. Have you ever dislocated your shoulder before? No. No, first time. And another important caregiver shows up. Jethro's girlfriend, Kaya. Okay. If it is just an anterior dislocation and everything's all right, we'll just see if we can relocate it. Lifeguards deal with dislocations every week, but they are less used to seeing one of their own in pain. Despite the paramedic's best attempts, Jethro's shoulder can't be relocated here. One, two, three, lift. In hospital, Jethro will learn if his lifeguarding season is over. It's the day of the annual lifeguard challenge. Waiting at Tamarama, injured lifeguard Jethro is tasked with shoe duties. I got one hand too. Like how he's supposed to give a two shoe job to a one hand guy. I'm off it. <laughs> it's a tradition among lifeguards to play pranks during the race. And this year is no different. 
I really want to um, rustle Muzz's feathers. <laughs> I want to fill his shoes with sand. You're going to blow up. <laughs> Given Mario is already in last place, it hardly seems fair. Oh, Clipper! The favourite coming out of nowhere. Clipper. Clipper and Jacko. Yeah, Jess, who was coming in first? Mate, we have Chapo. Close by Reedy. Chapo's coming in first for the lifeguards, so bit of a shock. As the Man. run leg begins, go chips! A hungry pack close in on Chapo. Get those meat legs going, baby. Oh god. Get them going, mate. Get them going. Get them going. Oh, Is that far behind you? I wonder where the Italian stallion is right now. Oh, let's get it up, though. Uh, Jesse, where's our little Italian friend, Mario? Silence. <laughs> He's disappeared. Mario is coming last. <laughs> That's all you, brother. Let's go, Muzz. He comes the Italian stallion. Moving up. While it's tough at the top, it's even tougher at the bottom. Motherfucker, look at this. This off, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> 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 he had to do a little bit of deconstruction of the sandcastles when he got back to Tama. Oh, I found the sandcastles here. <laughs> Jeff. Mid afternoon, huge seas and gale force winds have cleared the beach of people. Except for one man. Look, this guy's just stoked. He's just stoked. He's fully composing something, eh? And we were a little bit confused because he was throwing his arms out. He was like Thor or something. He was like some sort of god. People normally do that on a dance floor. It's just that he's doing it in front of the raw ocean. That. It's deep house, mate. It's, house, yeah. it's just deep. Oh, he's finishing up. Right. I'm calling that he's not done. I'm right. He's, he's coming back, you reckon, with another trash? He had to look up here, didn't he? He's got more to offer this bloke. Oh, he's going back. Can you go down and find out what music he's listening to, please? But before you do, we'll have a little guess yeah. on what he's gonna. What yes. I'm, I'm calling genre his house. I mean, it looks like his house job. We really didn't know, because he was um, just throwing out some more inspiring moves, and it had to be something good. What's he going, man? Let's get him up here. Let's oh, get him up here. Yeah. Go get him up here, Jim, mate. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'll, go. I'll get him up okay. here. What better way to find out than go down and have a little dance with him and, and ask him, what is it? <laughs> so that's what I did. <laughs> what are you listening to, mate? Some DMX. Have a listen? Yeah. Oh, here you've got it on. You're putting your headphones on. 18-year-old traveller Jake is on holidays from London. And it looks like he's found a soulmate in Aussie lifeguard Jethro. So I had a chat with him and I was like, Jake, mate, the boys are wondering, you know, what you're listening to. Are you keen to come up and, and have a chat? They, they want to speak to you. And he's like, yeah, yeah. This is Jay. Oh, yeah, Ledge. Uh, how are you? Uh, yeah, how are you? Uh, uh, fully. Right. Uh, Where are you from? No, I didn't realize there's so many people in there. What, what so genre of music you listen to? What do you listen to? Uh, we need to know what you listen some, to. Some sort of gangster rap. Is this in a DMX? DMX. Oh, yeah. Mouse just came out of nowhere and said, mate, do you rap? Can you rap? And we all looked at each other like, he can't rap. He's not a rapper. Uh, <laughs> British kid rapping city when I get through getting it down with the people of Bondi rescue. Oh! Off oh, oh, but I'm drowning off a lifeguard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They be acting crazy. They go into the chat and up and they won't save me. Oh. When I go to the bottom of the seabed, go, then I go to a sea red, red lights flash up and I'm drowning. Muscular flexing, get the death. <laughs> Repping England, the UK, come through the dude no. play on the beach of UA. Master Jay. Master Jay. Jay. Hey, uh, Jay, would 
just don't give it its... Um, no. Yeah, this, can I put it on here? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Can I now legally say people's eyes? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 It was just one of those Bondi moments, you know, where something really strange happens out of nowhere. I feel like this could be a future. I feel like I should come down here, beef up a little bit, try and get a job as a lifeguard. For public safety, a shark detection system has been installed off Bondi. The shark boy is a big yellow UFO floating out the back of the bay at Bondi, and it, um, it has a sonar that, that picks up tag sharks and sends messages through to the, the, the authorities. All messages automatically go to head lifeguard Hoppo. That pings when a tag shark comes through and notifies that there is something swimming in the bay. As well as detecting sharks, the boy serves as a great marker point for lifeguards doing board training. It's a good point to go out and back. It's probably roughly 500 metres out, and that gives you a kilometre of time you go out and back. But not all lifeguards enjoy being so far from land. I've got a phobia of sharks, right? And she's like, don't ever come near me. Like, I never want to see one of these things in the water unless I'm in a cage. I just hyped Jesse up and said, mate, let's, let's pal around the shark camp. Mate. I was like, come on, mate, let's get out there. Like, Hell, man, we're getting out there, we're paddling around, and look, it's right there. He's going, no, nah, I'm not. In the end, I was just like, come on, let's go. 9.02 a.m. Jesse and Jethro reach the buoy. It's impossible to see much below the surface. Once we got to the buoy, we tapped it. <laughs> Jesse just pinned it for sure. <laughs> The look of death in his eyes, he just wanted land. <laughs> just because no sharks can be seen, that doesn't mean there aren't any nearby. We come back up to the tower and uh, Dino was up there laughing. And we're like, what are you laughing at? And he goes, look at this message I just got off Hoppo. <laughs> Great White, 9 a.m., 7th of January. So say three, three metres in length. Look See? Like, who has that much bad luck? There most probably hasn't been a great white in Bondi in how long? And as soon as me and Jeff pedal out to that stupid yellow boy, there's a great white out there. Jesse's terrified of sharks. He, um, yeah, he, he's, he's rattled today. He, he, I think he thinks he's got really bad luck. But, um, yeah, I reckon you make your own luck. If the big boy wants to get you, there's no getting back. So, um... I don't think I'll be doing that anytime again soon. Oh, wait, I've got a... There's two people upstairs. Could someone just come down? We have big problems. <laughs> oh, that's not ideal. So I was reversing in the trailer. No, it was five to seven. It's been a busy day. All the boys want to go home. I just heard this deafening bang. Hey, um, just ah! I've hit the door, and the door hit the floor. Uh, I've the door. With no way of locking away the buggies and jet skis, Jules calls the boss. Hey, Hoppo, it's Jules here at Bondi. We have quite a big problem. Not wanting to panic, Hoppo, Jules tries to make light of the situation. One of the roller doors has actually blown off. But Hoppo has seen one too many summers to fall for that. I mean, to blow the roller door off here, we'd have to probably have cyclonic, you know, conditions, and it definitely wasn't blowing that hard. Now, yeah, Jethro's... Cracked a few milestones in the service over the years. He locked himself in the North Tower. Came in beach in the jet ski and dislocated his shoulder. And now packing up the beach, he's taken out the roller door. Now we're going to hear the end of this one, eh? Oh. We can't even put the bikes away. <laughs> if someone comes down tonight, they could take them. With thousands of dollars of equipment unsecured, a different kind of guard is needed on the beach tonight. Had to get a security guard down for the night to keep an eye on, because there's no way of securing the tunnel. Oh, 
This is probably my worst incident to date. Everyone's got a roller door in their life. I'm not sure if I'll ever achieve my quest for the, being the perfect lifeguard, but um, I'll keep trying. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Something's up, something's sus. It's not a flash mob like they're gonna get yeah. nude and flash. No. You're gonna get naked. Back in my day, mate. If you flash, you means you're nude. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, two seven-foot drag queens appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> I definitely needed backup. Hello? Welcome. Have they done anything? No. I'm just getting around. Um, here we go. There's a flash mob. I'm a big fan of, of keeping the drive alive. So if someone's dancing, I'm dancing. Initially, Jethro was attracted to the action. Now the action is attracted to Jethro. It's bloody warm for all this get up, isn't it? You're not wearing much. I'm wearing more than I would normally wear. It's always harder when I'm bigger than the lifeguards. I'll stand back here. Yeah, I was intimidated to say the least. <laughs> it could be a case of opposites attract, but Jethro actually shares something in common with his new friends. Yeah, how are you going? We've got similar hair. Oh, yeah, mate. He's <laughs> you and I, we've got the same hairdresser. Ah. It's quite funny, it's a bit of a scene. I haven't seen that many, many drag queens in my time. But once they started coming at me live, I was a bit worried. <laughs> You really? condition yours. <laughs> Mine's a little dry. Do you want to feel? I felt yours. Smell it. Yes. Oh, no. feel for We're a not feel. those kind of drag queens. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Pull up. <laughs> and sign up for this. We wanted you to come and join in the dance. Well, maybe we could do it together. <laughs> maybe next time. Oh, maybe I'll just throw myself on the water and then we could bust a move out there. All right, it's too hot out here, boys. I don't know how you do it. We're taking our heels and running. We're going for a beer. Uh, Thanks for keeping oh, it on. No, no, no. You look a fair bit like that one in the pink cake. I don't mean to be rude. But... Maybe if, you know, like, gun doesn't fall through, I could... <laughs> <laughs> right, what to have a strong brow? All strong brow. All the Yeah, it's not a, not a regular surf cop, this one. It's a, it's a fancy dress surf cop, so there's a heavy emphasis on being outlandish with your costumes and getting dressed up and having a bit of fun with it. Maybe, like, a nice gloss or something? I think I need to redo Look, I've had a few hints that I do look better as a girl than as a bloke, so... I come as Brittany. Yeah, when I looked in the mirror, I was a little bit conflicted. Like, I come off heaps better than I thought. Yes, Jethro! Yeah, wow, Jethro. He pulls it off. I'm not going to say much more, but he pulls it off. Oh, my God, look at Joel. For you guys. <laughs> what are you dressed as, Pharaoh? Pharaoh? I'm Cleopatra, the most beautiful woman in the world. Pharaoh. Pay some respect. While the boys bring the sparkle, it's Jules who steals the show. Oh, look at that, look at Jethro. Yeah. Coming dressed as Jethro. Yeah. Jeff, Jeff. Same pie. Jeff. 